In this topology you're seeing in front of you, I'm going to be building out an MPLS network, layer 2 MPLS network, and I'm going, I'm going to be using VXLAN tunneling uh, protocol for end-to-end -end reachability. Okay, I've got uh, six sites here belonging to three different customers, and these customers have requested for end-to-end -end reachability. The customers are miles apart, and I have built out this MPLS network to allow uh, seamless connection. So the uh, topology you're seeing on your screen is made up of three different parts. The first layer is the IP layer that is powered by OSPF. So I have OSPF running uh, on this network uh, between uh, the PE uh, devices. I have uh, OSPF running here. So I have loopback interfaces on all of the PE and the P device. The P device is actually the core. So I have OSPF running on them. After that, I'll have MPLS enabled for end-to-end -end reachability over the IP network. And then we'll have VXLAN tunnel built over the MPLS network to allow customer A to be able to reach customer B and uh, to allow customer A site 1 to be able to reach customer A site 2 and so on and so forth. So to uh, ensure that we do not run out of um, physical ports on our devices, we are using uh, VLANs uh, on this connection. Um, uh, uh, we are using um, uh, VLANs for this connection. So there's going to be two VLANs each on each of this uh, PE device connecting to uh, the switch. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, it's going to be fun if you're yet to subscribe to this channel please subscribe also like this post comment and turn off your post notification so to make sure that this video is not too long i'm going to be breaking it into two parts the first part has to do with the ip addressing of the entire uh, topology okay the configuration of ip addresses look back and one ips and also the configuration of ospf and MPLS LDP neighbor relationship. After that, then comes the part two, which has to do with VXLAN configuration and reachability test. You do not want to miss any of this. So please make sure that you watch the video till the end. And if you have any question, please leave it in the comment section. So first I'm going to address the interfaces. I'm going to configure the one IPs and the look back IP addresses. I need the loopback IP addresses for my OSPF neighbor relationship and my MPLS LDP neighbor establishment. So the first thing to do is to log into the router. I'm going in via the command line interface. I'll be using a mix of both the command line and the uh, GUI for this lab. So I set the identity of the router more like the host name. Uh, this makes it easier for me to identify the router I'm working on and then I'm going to uh, configure a bridge. The bridge represents the uh, loopback interface in Microtik. Then I'll configure the IP addresses, one for the loopback interface and then the other for the WAN interfaces. The loopback interface address is 1.1.1.4 slash 32. And then I'm going to configure the one IP for the interfaces going to PE1, PE2, and PE3. So for the interface connecting to PE1, it is 10.10.1.1 slash 30, and it's going to be assigned to ETA1. And then I have 10.10.1.5 assigned to ETA2. And of course, I will be having 10.10.1.9 assigned to ETA3. So if you do not know your subnetting, it is important that you know your subnetting. So these are all slash 30 IPs in different subnets connecting to different uh, PE devices. PE actually means provider edge devices. Okay, it's a provider edge router used in MPLS. So I am now logged in to uh, PE1. 
via the command line interface and then i will do the same thing over here so the first thing to do uh, is to set the identity like i said earlier it makes it easier for you to know which of the router you are working on so after setting the id you go to system identity set name and then you put the name and the next thing is to set the uh, to configure a bridge a bridge represents the loopback interface so you set the bridge interface and then you assign that ip address to the bridge ip address add address equals to 1.1.1.1 this is for pe1 slash 32 and then i assign it to the loopback interface the next ip address is the ip address on ether1 which is the interface connecting to the uh, core which is the mpls core router so um, give the ip address as 10.10.1.2 slash 30 and the interface is ether1 so this connects me back to the cloud and then it will be good to also test reachability at this point and good enough i have reachability so i'll move over to uh, pe2 here on pe2 i'm going to log in and since it's a brand new router I'm being asked to set the IP, uh, the password. Okay, haven't done that, haven't set the username and password. I'll do the same thing here. System identity set name equals to, and I'll put the name as PE2. So after that, I am going to configure a loopback interface. Interface bridge add, and the name equals to loopback1. So after configuring a loopback interface, the next thing is to assign an IP address to that loopback interface as well as the one interface connecting us to the MPLS cloud. So I'll give the IP address 1.1.1.2 slash 32 interface equals to loopback one. Then the next is IP address, uh, which is equals to 10.10.1.2 which is the one ip of the p2 router and it's going to be oh sorry it's going to be 10.10.1.6 slash 30 and the interface is ether1 so remember that um, i'm using the slash 30 subnet okay so that makes it a block of four so zero network four network and then eight network all used within the mpls one network okay so next thing is to move over to ether3 at ether3 i'm going to set the username and password for this brand new microtech router and then after that i am going to set the identity of the device to make it easier for me to identify the device i'm working on so after setting the identity to um, uh, PE3, and then the next thing is to uh, set a loopback interface. So configure the loopback interface as loopback one, and of course, assign IP addresses, one to the loopback interface, okay, and then the other to the ether one interface. So for the loopback interface, I uh, will be going in with IP add, address will be equals to 1.1.1.3 slash 32 and it's going to be on the loopback interface so for a loopback interface it's not connecting to anything so it is wise for you to do a slash 32 subnet mask but for the interface connecting to a one link uh, since what you, what you have is just a device at the other end then you can do a slash 30 so at this point all the devices are connected to the core and they are also addressed on their loopback interfaces. The loopback address will be used uh, for the OSPF router ID as well as the MPLS LDP ID. So if you try to ping any IP on a different subnet from within the MPLS the, uh, cloud network, you will see that there is no route to host at this point uh routing needs to be configured okay this is because the devices do not have the knowledge of the existence of any other uh subnet apart from the subnet that they are directly connected to which is the loopback ip okay slash 32 subnet 
and of course the one interface that they are connected to which is the slash 30. so to configure ospf at this point you simply go to uh, routing ospf and then the first thing is to set the instance i have a full video on ospf configuration multi ospf configuration for that matter you can find it here okay so you set the instance name and then you set the area name the area should reference the instance that you've created earlier and then after that you set the interfaces that should participate in the ospf routing uh, process so when you go to interface template and then you add so you pick your interfaces i'm going to be advertising the loopback interface as well as the one interface okay so the first is the loopback interface i'm going to put it in area zero i'm doing a single area ospf in this case so the next is to go back and advertise the uh ether one interface which is the one interface okay and it's still going to be in area zero this is because i'm doing a flat area uh ospf uh, uh, process so i haven't done that i'm gonna move over to uh the next router to have the same process done so at the core uh, i have uh or three one interfaces and i also have the uh, loopback interface so i'm going to be advertising all of them so the first thing i'll do is to go to uh, the ospf uh, 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 process domain where i'm going to be configuring the ospf so i'll go into the ospf menu by typing routing ospf and then i'm going to create the instance by saying instance add and set the name for the instance to instance one you can use any name for your instance uh, like i said in my previous video ospf instance is locally significant but globally insignificant what it means is that i can use instance one here and use instance 30 on another router and it will work so having said the instance the next thing is to configure your area and since i'm doing a single area i will just put this command once so it's going to be area add name area equals to area zero and then area id area zero and instance or reference the first instance i created after that i am going to uh, advertise my interfaces by going into the interface template add interface and then i'll start with the loop back one interface placing it in area zero i'll do the same thing for the ether one interface and i'll place it in area zero and i'll also do the same thing for ether two and ether three okay ospf is an industry standard routing protocol that is available on all oem equipment that handles routing and it is very uh very efficient in routing and as you can see here we already have a neighbor relationship to um uh, our first uh pe1 router which has the router id 1.1.1.1 okay that address is the highest loopback address on that router so automatically it became the router id for the ospf routing process so we'll move over to router 2 which is the pe2 and do the same thing okay go into the ospf uh, menu and then uh, enable our instance which is instance one and then next thing is to configure your area go into the area sub menu and you add the name equals to area zero you can use any name but it's good to use area zero so that it matches with the area id which is area zero and of course reference the instance you have created earlier so after that the next thing is to uh, go to your interface templates and there you can advertise your different interfaces that should participate in ospf i like the way microtech has done this it makes it easier for you to set up ospf quickly okay so i'm doing for ether one now so haven't done that for ether one there should be a neighbor uh relationship at this point to the mpls core router so we'll move over to uh 
ever three to have the same thing done as well so we go into the ospf uh, menu and create your instance instance add name equals to instance one and after that i'll you know name my area or create my area you go to the area sub menu and then add the name equals to area zero and area id equals to zero to zero to zero to zero which represents zero and also reference the instance that was created in step one so the next one then is to uh advertise your networks so normally you would like in cisco you advertise the network or you can also do uh interface placement in cisco actually so what we are actually doing here is just activating ospf on the interfaces that we want to participate in ospf and that automatically advertises the ip address configured on any of those interfaces so ospf is configured so now it's time to check the neighbor relationship from the core. The core is at the middle, so you can see that I have relationship established to all the PE routers that are connected to the core. So at this point, OSPF is fully established. Neighbor relationship is established and is converged. All the PE routers can reach themselves. So which is the perfect uh, scenario you want before proceeding to activating MPLS on your network. So for that, like I said earlier, I'll be doing a mix of both uh, uh, <coughs> command line interface and GUI. So I'm going to be going in via the GUI to have MPLS enabled and on all the interfaces as well as the MPLS LDP uh, configuration. Okay, so I'll pick a cloud and connect it to the core router. The core router there is represented by a cloud, but it's actually a MicroTik router. So if I connect that cloud to Ether 4 of the cloud, I'm going to go in, although it's optional, I'm going to go in and configure that interface as a DHCP client. Otherwise, I will just log into that MicroTik using the MAC address. So but for this one, I'm just going to do this and configure that interface so now that the interface has been set as a DSCP client it has acquired an IP address now it's time to log in to that device via the Windows using that IP address so here we are on the router the core router via Windows. now it's time to uh, enable MPLS and MPLS LDP so you go to the MPLS menu click on MPLS and you go to the interface to enable MPLS. In Cisco, you would enable MPLS globally and all the participating interfaces. But here, you simply go in and you enable MPLS on the interfaces that should be participating in MPLS neighbor relationship. So for the core router, I have about three interfaces, Ether1, Ether2 and Ether3 that are participating in MPLS neighbor relationship. The loopback interface at this point is not involved because it is not connecting to any of the PE routers. So I'll enable MPLS on the three interfaces. After that, I'll set my LDP instance. Here, I'll set my LSR um, router ID, so which is 1.1.1.4. You see why I chose these IPs for my loop back. And of course, I'm going to set my MPLS transport IP as well, my LDP transport IP to the same thing. After that, you go to the LDP interfaces. These are the interfaces that will be establishing LDP neighbor relationship to other PE uh, routers. LDP stands for uh, Label Distribution Protocol. This is the protocol that allows the formation of label uh, of neighbor relationship using labels. So I've done that on the three interfaces. In this case, neighbor relationship will be formed dynamically. I'm not statically entering 
the neighbor IP addresses. So once I have it enabled on the interface, like I have done now, and I go to the next neighbor and do the same thing, neighbor relationship will be dynamically formed. LDP neighbor relationship should be dynamically formed. So I haven't done that for the core. I am going to be setting up the cloud as well for the other routers. So maybe the one of the easiest things to do here is to disconnect the cloud from the core and then move it around from one of the routers to the other one from the, you know across the PE routers. But on a second thought, I think I should just uh, uh, pick a switch like I'm doing now and have all the uh, MPLS routers, including the core, connect to that switch and then also connect the cloud to the switch. That way, I'm using a single cloud for all the uh, uh, PE and the P router. You know, the, the core is like a P router, is a provider router, but the other ones are provider edge routers. So remember, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to have GUI uh access to the devices it has nothing to do with the routing process it has nothing to do with the control plane or data plane or anything it's just for the management uh access via gui without this setup the the cloud and the switch everything should work and i think at the end of this video i'll be removing it just to tell you to show you that everything should work so back in uh, PE1 router after connecting it to the uh, to the cloud I will set the interface connecting to the cloud as a DHCP client just like I did for the core and then I should have an IP which I do fair enough so on the P1 router you can see the IP address given there 154 that's 106.154 I'll be logging in via that um, IP so I'm here on the PE1 router, the GUI interface, and then I'll go to MPLS and then enable MPLS. And then I'm going to have MPLS enabled on the interface that is participating in MPLS, which is the, the one interface. So I only have one, one interface here that should participate, which is the interface connecting to the core. Of course, I will set my uh, LDP instance by setting my LSR as well as the transport address. Both are the same thing. It's a loopback IP that I have on the router. So after that, I will go to the LDP interfaces and enable it on Ether1. So this is dynamic neighbor relationship. So at this point, P1 should have an LDP neighbor relationship with the core, as you can see. So the core IP is 1.1.1.4. That's the transport ID. You can see there. So, and you can also see the neighbor, uh, the LDP labels that have been formed. Okay. So from uh, um, PE1's perspective, everything that PE1 knows uh, was gotten from the core. And what you're seeing here as the remote mapping is from the perspective of the core. So, for the neighbor relationship already is established, but the core already has um, a, a, lab, a distribution table, a labor distribution table, which it has pushed to uh, PE1. So we'll go to PE2 to do the same thing. On PE2, I don't need to set the IP address, so I'm going to be going in via MAC address. I just want to show you. So you can either set an IP or once you connect the device to the cloud. You should be able to access it via layer two, which is through MAC address. So I will set the interface uh, uh, and enable the interface that should participate in MPLS, and then go to my LDP instance and enable it. Set the LDP the LSR um, ID, which is the IP address on the loopback interface, and of course the transport IP as well to the same thing. Then I'll enable LDP neighbor relationship. You saw when I checked that there was no neighbor relationship established. So I'm going to enable LDP uh, neighbor uh, establishment, you know, dynamic neighbor discovery on ETA1. Then after that, uh, we should have a neighbor relationship uh, between this PE 
device and the core okay as can be seen there is already established so we'll move over to the uh, next device which is the pe3 which is the last device in our mpls uh, network connect to it via mac address okay using winbox so here we will repeat the process but i will show you uh, something interesting here so go to the mpls interface and enable mpls on eta1 and then go to the uh, ldp instance uh, enter our lsr okay which is the uh, the same ip address as the loopback ip on the, that device and then i will set the transport address to the same thing 1.1.1.3 so i'll go to ldp uh, neighbor and on that interface LDP interfaces and I'll enable it on Ether 1, but I will turn off dynamic neighbor relationship just to show you uh, that once this is turned off, you will not be able to establish neighbor relationship. And because we have it turned on, that is why I am not entering static neighbor IPs. So you can see that the neighbor discovery is turned off on Ether 1, and as such, I am having no neighbor relationship now to uh, the core. Uh, MPLS router. So I would have to manually enter the IP myself if I want to establish that neighbor relationship. But because I don't want to do that, so I have it uh, uh, disabled now back to what it was before the default setting. So now we have MPLS neighbor relationship to the core router. So here you can see the mapping, okay, from the core perspective uh, to reach the networks that are directly connected to the core. You don't need a label okay so because it is called the pen ultimate hop popping so the router already knows how to get there but to reach other loopback interfaces you need a label so from that remote label that we see in that uh, in, in the uh, label description table we will need uh, uh we will need um um labels to reach all the loopback addresses from any of those uh, any of those PE routers, but all the one networks, you don't need a label for that. So which shows that if you're doing your test, which I will do uh, shortly, we are not using MPLS to reach any of those uh, one IPs. But if you want to reach the loopback IP from PE one, say you want to reach PE three you will have to go through the mpls network so if i do a trace from any of those uh, pe devices you will see them so as you can see there from uh, where i am now which is uh, pe1 to get to uh, pe3 i'll need a label which is label 18 and of course label 17 to get to pe2 every other uh, subnet there uh, is reachable via the IP network. So as you can see, to get to PE1, and I think I'm on PE3, sorry, to get to PE1, I had to go through label uh, 16, okay, which shows you that I'm using MPLS to do that. And to get to PE2 from PE3, uh, the label is 17, and it went through the MPLS network. But if I test to the one IP, Okay, the 10.10.1 uh, subnet. And uh, if I'm testing to that, which is the one network between the core and router one, I'm doing that from router three. It did not go through the MPLS network. Okay, that's what we call pen ultimate hop popping. This ends the part one of this uh, series. The part two, which has to do with uh, VXLAN establishment, which is VXLAN over MPLS. Uh, tunnel configuration will be coming so thanks for watching please like this video uh, comment and give us a subscription see you in my next video thank you